Okay. Now, if I told you, let, let's jump to another con uh, uh, analogy here. If I told you, you can work hard and have money, or the government will give you money, which one would you choose? Again, if I told you, okay, you can work hard and have money, or the government will give you money, which one would you choose, and more importantly, why would you choose it? Well, okay, now if we had some honesty, and I'm not expecting anybody to be honest here, but if we had some honesty, I would, a person would say, well, I, I, I really want the government to give me money because I'm, I'm sort of lazy. I don't really want to hold down a job. I don't want, you know, I would rather the, the government give me money and then I can do whatever I want to do all day long. Sit on my butt, watch soap operas, whatever, you know, gain a lot of weight, up to three, four hundred pounds. Yeah, that, that sounds good to me. Eat, eat all the time and let the government give me money. Now, no one's going to admit this. No one's going to say that. But, you know, it's, it's you know, I'm trying to get you to think something that most people just don't want to do. Especially religious people. Religious people refuse to think, most of them. They just don't want to think. But I'm trying to get you to think here. So we come to this verse, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we're comparing it to another verse that talks about salvation in Hebrews 5 and verse 9. It says, Jesus being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. And we're asking the question, why would you choose one scripture over the other? What inside of you wants to believe that salvation is the easiest thing that all you got to do is just say, Jesus, and you're saved. I'm calling upon Jesus, and you're saved. Why would you want to choose that versus this other verse? that says, no, Jesus became the author of eternal salvation unto a specific group of people, the ones who are willing to obey him. Now, could it have anything, do you think, to do with the fact that maybe there are people out there, maybe there are religious people. Now, I'm, just, I'm just speculating. I'm just speculating. I'm probably wrong. But I'm just speculating, speculating that there may be some, maybe just one or two, religious people out there who really don't want to obey God, but they want to be saved. Yeah, that's it. I really, in fact, I'm thinking on the lines of, I'll wait until I'm old and ugly and my body's wearing out, and when I'm lying in the hospital, I will call a minister to come by and save my soul and say a sinner's prayer over me. Yeah. That's what I'll do, because that, that's easier. I'll call upon the name of the Lord when I'm ready to kick the bucket. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Now, let me tell you something. You will never have real salvation until you discover your own heart. Now, what do I mean by discover your own? You, you've got to be honest with God. When God was calling me, he reveals certain, he gave me certain convictions about the Sabbath, about the holy days, and I didn't want to do any of those things, and I told God, God, I don't want to do any of those things. They're, they're mosaic, they're Jewish, they're, you know, they're, they're for Israel only, they're not for us, they're for somebody else. That's old covenant, we got the new covenant, and Jesus did away with all that. And, but you know, it was discovering my own heart and admitting, admitting to God God, I really have this heart problem, and I don't want to do the things you're telling me to do. Now, I figured eventually that God already knows that, that he's smart enough to already know my heart, so I might as well just admit to him 